Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. I know, I know, I've been gone for a couple months, but I am back with a new challenge and more game dev. So, a while ago, and by this I mean a long time ago, I collaborated with Space Nomad to do a little game dev challenge. For this little collab, we would pick a theme and with no communication, we would pass a game prototype back and forth to see what it becomes. We called this the Snowball Challenge. Each turn had a focus on gameplay, art, sound, UI, and for some reason, I guess this didn't seem challenging enough to me, so I thought I would pick up a new engine. Uh, I told Space Nomad I would dip my toes into Godot and see how that goes. This was going to be my first time using the engine, and I thought it would be an interesting opportunity to do so. I've always heard great things about how lightweight it is, and how much more accessible it is to people who might not have higher-end PCs. I also heard that it's easier to pick up GD script because the syntax is a little bit easier to understand, similar to Python. So I was interested to see how it would compare to C Sharp and other languages. It was also Space Nomad's preferred engine, so I'm sure I was in good hands. We finally began the project, and Space Nomad got the first go at starting the project from scratch. As I waited for her, we also set up the project on GitHub to do some version control and to pass on the project more seamlessly. This definitely made the collaboration much, much easier, and if you don't use something similar with your teams, or even for yourself, I definitely recommend using GitHub. Of course, if you'd like to see Space Nomad's side of this challenge, definitely check out her video on her channel. So the real challenge here was that we could have no communication about things we've implemented or our ideas. So a lot of the planning was on the fly and two-sided. We definitely knew we were going to encounter some issues, but that was all part of this experiment. We could also not significantly change or remove features that the other person had implemented. This definitely made things harder, and it was sort of like broken telephone in a way. So after about a week, Space Nomad passed the game back to me, and oh boy, did I feel like I got thrown into an unknown land. But getting thrown into a whole bunch of random code now, along with that, really introduced an extra layer of difficulty for me. However, I didn't let this get to me. This can be a common occurrence in the software industry or even projects you might encounter. Needing to be able to work with old code or legacy code is something that's pretty useful and wasn't too foreign to me, so I was pretty confident that this was going to be doable. Plus, a lot of coding languages share a lot of similarities in terms of logic amongst each other, so it can be easier to catch on if you have previous experience. So for me, Python definitely helped out, and just having other uh, experience in languages definitely helped me pick up things more quickly. So the first thing I needed to do was see what was already implemented. So it looks like she got the basics of grid-based movement in here. I see a button that says draw, and clicking on it pulls a card. Uh, clicking on the card allowed me to move the player in any direction the number of spaces that the card displayed. All right, so now this almost feels like I'm a playtester at this point. I'm trying to see what the game's about, and I have no prior knowledge going into this game. And going in blinded let me learn about the state of the game and things that I could add and improve even before getting started on it. I think this came with my experience as a game dev. Currently, all the cards are only allowed one move. Now, I had to think, how could I turn this movement system into more of a game? Of course, this is adding more randomization. Uh, only being allowed to move one space was a bit boring. Pulling more interesting cards can make it a little bit more fun, so not knowing what you're gonna get adds a little element there. However, it would have to be between 1 and 3, as that seemed like a fair number compared to how many squares were on the grid. I found the function that set the number of moves on the card, and I tweaked that line so that it would randomize the number. After that, I had to make sure that the player could move the exact amount that they pulled. Uh, this definitely required a bit of digging, and having no communication with Space Nomad proved to be a little bit more difficult. Luckily, the function and variable names were pretty straightforward, so I was able to tunnel through and find what I needed. Of course, during this process, I was opening up Godot documentation and referencing anything that was unclear to me. I even watched some tutorials at some point to see how they did things so that I could compare to what was already implemented. 
The UI and the syntax of Godot definitely threw me off a little bit initially, especially since I'm a long-time Unity user. But once you put things together and understand what the code is doing, things became a little bit more clear, and there were a lot of similarities between the two engines. Other than that, logic was done quite similarly. This didn't seem like an ample enough addition to me, so I worked on another mechanic. I decided I would add an attack move. Since it was grid-based, the attack move would be able to go in any of the directions that you can move in. So basically, I would instantiate a bullet and let it travel along the X or Y axes of the player. I created a new card in the deck for the attack move. This brings another element of randomization to the game. We definitely did a lot of work with the concept of states in the code, and this definitely made things a lot easier. This allows the code to know what functions to execute in what state. After wrapping up the shooting functionality, I decided I would add one more thing to enhance the gameplay, and something that Space Nomad might be able to bounce off of. I added a lifespan counter. So this would be a limited number of moves, and I guess I was hoping this would bring a strategic twist to it, but I don't think she thought the same. Of course, all this time I was pushing to GitHub consistently to make sure I didn't lose my work, so it was a matter of sending her a message. Again, make sure you check out Space Nomad's version of the collaboration to see all the missing parts of development. So after some time passed, I received the project back again. Uh, it looks like she added enemies in random grid spots to the game, as well as a winning and losing condition. This is perfect, we already have a basis of a game ready. So you would either get game over if you hit an enemy, and if you make it to the level's endpoint, you win. I think the enemies were an obvious addition after seeing the attack move added on my turn. Since we decided we would keep the scope of the project very small, it was time to work on other components of the game. This time, I would work on some of the audio and sound design. First up was choosing a good track to go with the game. I decided to go searching for some copyright free tracks and came across one I really liked. I also added some sound effects that I generated from the BFXR application. Once I passed it back to Space Nomad, she worked on some of the menus and tried to wrap up the game. I'm not quite sure exactly why we left the art until the end, but maybe we just needed a little break. Anyways, next up was to do some sprite work for the player and the enemies. Since we called the project Snowball, I decided to keep a winter theme going. The main player would be a snowman, and I would have an idle animation for it. The attack would be a snowball, of course. I made all these assets in a sprite. I wasn't super happy with my pixel art here, it was a little bit rushed, but I tried to go with the flow and come up with what I could. I also made the end goal a little present and whipped together some background art. Finally, I tossed it back to Space Nomad, and for her final iteration, she ended up working on some of the fire enemies, and it looked perfect for the theme, and they are super, super cute. She also worked on some of the leftover UI stuff, such as the cards and the buttons. So finally, we have a completed game. It's super simple, but we took care of all the different parts. So we booked out some time to play the full game together for the first time, and this is how it went. You see it, right? Mm hmm? Right, so... Wait, I didn't put the we game didn't... name in. Wow. <laughs> we didn't decide. Yeah. We can choose it together, I guess. Do yeah. we have a name in mind? I mean, we've been calling it Snowball Game all this time. Yeah. Um, nothing other than that. Um, yeah, we can just call it Snowball. Okay. Snowballed. Oh, Snowballed. That's pretty good. Okay. Will that's that good. go to the center? Let me rewind it. This uh, here's Perfect. Snowballed, a name that we totally didn't come up with like two seconds ago. Mm -hmm. It was meticulously <laughs> chosen. <laughs> we really thought about it yeah, really uh, hard. Uh, but there's the credits. Mm -hmm. Ooh! And, yeah. The little enemies. Those are cute. Thanks. I uh, think th that I took from uh, the music is that Manisha is way better than me at choosing sounds. But I didn't make anything myself. Yes, you know? but still. I just found it. <laughs> picking it out is pretty hard, and I always struggle with it. Mm. So I think I might have used BFXR for sound effects. I can't remember. Hmm. So you can just like play around with sounds and randomize them. I and tried them until you um, like it. I tried an app uh, program like that, not this particular one, and it wasn't good. Yeah, I mean this one. This one was okay because you can randomize it and just like 
uh -huh. tweak it after oh. that. You don't need to create anything. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay. So yeah. anyways, we have this little arrangement. Uh, I can't talk. Mm -hmm. Little arrangement where we draw card, draw cards, and then like from one to three, and then you mm -hmm. can either move or attack with these cards, and then you have to get to the present. The moves thing doesn't do anything. Uh, like once you run out of moves, you can still move. Oh yeah, um, we didn't do a like an end screen game over. No, for that. we have game over. Yeah, not for this. Oh, we did. Uh, mm. We have a game over yeah. for uh, like running into an enemy. The oh, reason yeah. is that I was making the gameplay loop, like the win and the lose. And I thought that I didn't like the fact that you made like only 10 moves. So yeah. uh, with 10 moves, I couldn't walk all around the board. And I thought that was kind of like, what's the use of the of board if you can't get there, right? Yeah. But I couldn't remove it because of the rules. So I just decided that it's just not going to do anything. Like it's just going to sit there and I hope that nobody would notice it. And then you accentuated it with the, this animation and the... Yeah. Oops. I like it. No, it's okay. It's like the mm, purpose of the challenge. I like it. I like, yeah. like the miscommunication and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was one of our rules, right? You yeah. can't really take out or you can't remove undo. anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We even have like uh, two entities for the enemy because uh, the one that like doesn't work because... You made one, and I didn't like. Uh, I thought like uh, the way I understood it the rules, I can't out. change anything that you did. So I didn't touch it, and I made another one instead. And I just didn't put uh, it in the game. Oh, I don't. I think I like made it, but I didn't actually implement it. Yeah, yeah, you didn't implement it. So I was like, well, she didn't yeah. implement it. I'm gonna do one from scratch. Yeah, I like how you did fire. Yeah, I thought like for the enemy. What beats? Uh, what beats damn what beats snow what what can like snow die from it's like fire yeah i kind of got inspired for, for the um have you seen howl's moving castle mm -hmm. uh i kind of got inspired by calcifer from howl's moving castle i like the pun like this is a snowball game and you made a snowman that uh throws snowballs i love puns yeah. in video games in general i love that yeah exactly when i saw like what the project was called i'm like okay this is perfect Yes. The game itself is a snowball, and then it's yes. just literal. I love it. So um, you picked the original, like, random theme, right? Yeah. Or it was random? Uh, yes, right? it was, was it? called random. Okay. Oh, that's what you were asking. <laughs> and so, like, what made you immediately make a grid-based game? Uh, I don't remember. It was <laughs> quite a while ago. I can talk about the hardest part. Obviously, for me, it was learning Godot for the first time. Um, I guess the code is kind of overwhelming when you just receive it. So just digging through and checking where everything um, gets, like where each thing is implemented, that was pretty interesting. I mean, I guess the grid stuff kind of made it a little bit more complicated, but eventually I got it, so... Yeah, but it was it was fun doing that and just like not having that communication. You're like, oh, no. Yes. I wish you could just explain to me what this is. <laughs> oh, I didn't have problems so. with like explaining things. I wish. Overall, it's crazy to see how many different components there are to making a quick game. I always forget how much hard work it involves and just switching your brain to all the different parts like sound takes a different part of your brain coding, art, you really got to wear a lot of hats when it comes to this. So going through that process really quickly without communication, definitely an interesting challenge. Learning a new engine was refreshing. Uh, I've been using Unity since 2016 on and off of course, but switching to this new engine was definitely a strange feeling. Got me out of that comfort zone, tried to make connections, find patterns in the engine. Very cool opportunity to do so. Definitely want to dive into Godot again, maybe with a fresh project, see what I can build from the ground up. That would definitely be a different experience. But yeah, that's about it for today. Um, thank you so much Space Nomad for asking me to collaborate. I'm so sorry it took so long to make this video, but I really appreciate that you always want to collab with me. We've played a couple games together, we've done a podcast. Definitely check out Space Nomad's channel. She makes a ton of videos on game development, especially Godot Engine, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, head over to her channel. So thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more videos this year, I promise. Uh, more challenges, I'm working on a bigger project. Uh, 
some shorts and tutorials maybe. So definitely look forward to it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.